Hello, welcome friends. Welcome to CAM tutorial series using Autodesk Fusion 360. Today we will be working with the lathe machines in the manufacturer environment. We will study how to set up the raw material workpiece for lathe machines and we will do four machining operations that includes rough turning, facing, grooving and threading. So let's get started with the Fusion 360. As you can see, I have already made this part. Okay, part making is very very simple. I'll just showcase the. I'll just showcase the. Yeah, front view. This is the front view. These are the overall dimensions of the part. Okay, I have made the half portion and then I have used the revolve command okay all the dimensions i have taken from the uh, image which we had okay and that is how the part is been made okay part making is very very easy okay on top of that i have made some references okay which we will require for say this line diagram i have created which will be used as the first uh, turning operation reference okay for the tool so it requires a continuous path for the single point cutting tool to travel in in terms of its z, z direction and few more references i have created for the groove that will be created later so let us move into the uh, manufacturing environment and before moving i would like to save this part so all these four operations we are using lathe turning facing grooving threading I will switch on the manufacturer environment then I will directly jump into the setup now as you can see I have already selected the generic mill turn okay Autodesk generic mill turn okay this is the default machine available as far as the uh, evaluation version of Autodesk Fusion 360 is concerned okay, so I have selected that okay operation type is turning or milling Okay, spindle is primary spindle then orientation now I have defined the orientation okay I have defined the orientation in this way so Z axis I have selected then also I have selected the X axis okay so you can select X axis in this way Okay. and the origin is stock front okay origin we have given as stock front uh, what we can do is we can give stock back as the origin okay now as you can see since we have given Z dimension okay in the uh, As you can see over here okay here I would require to flip Z axis okay I would require to flip Z axis or in a way I would require to select the proper face okay for uh, Z axis then I would require the X axis selection okay and origin is stock front okay so this is the stock front we have we have selected okay although we would require uh, this to go at at this particular position so that the origin 
I can select here as stock back. Yes. So now according to this diagram, as you can see, this is the origin. So we know that in lathe machine there are two uh, machining centers, the uh, part zero and machine zero. So we are going ahead with this machine zero, and you can just play with these options over here. You can keep on clipping the Z either way. There are various ways in which you can select this as the origin. So I have just followed one such way. There are again multiple ways. Okay. Now as far as the uh, stock is concerned, okay, if we give fixed size stock, okay, then we will not be able to machine this portion. So instead what we will do is we will give relative size stock. Okay, we will have stock side offset as 5 mm. Okay. And we will have stock uh, top offset also as 5 mm okay and okay relative size box okay we need to select relative size cylinder okay not relative size box okay that will ease our job so radial stock offset is going to be 5 and front side we say that is this front side offset that is going to be uh, 5 mm as well so as you can see as I give the values the changes are applied okay changes are applied as you can see in front direction 5 mm offset is created in radial direction also 5 mm offset is created okay. now the total dimensions become 110 even though my larger diameter is 100 the total diameter now became 110 and my total length is 200 but now in the right direction, okay, in the front side of the stock, I have increased the length by 5 mm so that I can machine that 5 mm excess and have a good uh, surface finish at the front face of the uh, this particular step bar. Now, as far as programming number is concerned, I'll go with 3050 and I will say let operations okay, as the comment so that's about it with the setup of the problem okay once again let me just check yeah stock setup when enabled you can perform rest machining functions based on operations related in the previous setup Okay, so we can switch this on so that every time we apply a new operation stock will be taken uh, whatever is remaining okay remaining stock will be taken so i'll just say okay over here okay then i will go into the first operation that is turning profile roughing okay turning profile roughing so for this we will require to select tool now the sequence over here again is the same sequence which we have applied in the CNC milling operations now the tool available are in turning sample tool okay, so I will go here to turning and turning general and here I have the tools you just have to check the orientation okay so this is the right hand orientation this is the left hand orientation now remain remember we have a left spindle so my uh, cutting uh, edge should should be pointing towards the left side okay so that means CNMT right hand okay this tool orientation we can select and as you can see it rightly points towards the workpiece okay now turning mode outside profile okay we don't have to change the tool orientation tool orientation has appeared in a proper way why because we have created this model in front view we can create the model in front view or top view that doesn't that doesn't change things okay because the lathe machine uh, operates with x and z uh, coordinates where x is a radial coordinate and z is a length coordinate and 
there is no third coordinate required in lathe operation. In feed speed, we will use the default preset, okay, whatever tool we have selected, okay, so that tool is associated with the default values of feed and speed, so we will not change them at this point of time. In geometry, okay, front is model front, I would say offset, yeah, I will first switch on the model. Okay, then model front the offset is going to be 5 okay or for that matter 205 okay then model back the offset is going to be let's say 20 mm in the reverse direction we want so I will put minus 20 mm I will just switch on rest machining but since this is the first operation so rest machining doesn't actually play any role okay you can also select model contours in this way okay you can also select model contours in this way and then accordingly automatically all your values will match okay either you can directly give values over here or you can select values and then a model front model back and accordingly you can have these values as well okay so yeah, so it's better to have these values 205 and minus 20 then we'll go into the radii okay so clearance let's say it is 10 this is the default value okay I, we can work with this default value clearance okay that is away from the stock then outer radius is stock we have taken okay outer radius is stock we have taken and inner radius there is no inner radius whatever we will be selecting from the geometry that will appear then we'll go into the passes okay then we'll go into the passes uh, yeah as far as the model is concerned okay instead of selecting this Okay, what we are actually going to select is this. Okay, and then accordingly model front, so I would require only 5 mm as the axis. Okay, and model back, uh, it is correct, minus 20 mm. Or here, instead of saying model back you can also say stock back okay stock back so that is one and the same thing okay model back or stock back okay so then we will move into this now remember i i created these lines okay over and above the model okay so that we can give a proper tool path for the tool. Now, tool path is a continuous line, so it cannot have breaks in between. So that is the reason why okay, I have created these lines over and above my model, and now I am able to select them. So remaining options mostly as it is. Okay, the maximum depth of cut I will keep it as let's say two. Okay, even depth of cuts I can say. Okay, and make sharp corners and stock to leave I will I will just uh, deselect okay because we are not going to run a finishing operation finishing operation although uh, happens to uh, be on the same lines okay, linking parameters safe Z okay clearance in in uh, I can I can increase Z clearance and X clearance values to 5 just to be on the safer side Okay, and retract distance also I can increase to 5 okay. this is the retract distance after completing the operation this is the X clearance and this is the Z clearance okay. so I will just say ok to this and we will see whether it gives us the tool path
yeah it gives us the tool path over here okay now we'll try to uh, do the simulation and see whether operations have appeared in a proper manner or not and whether there are any collisions happening so no collisions happening as such okay and we are getting the turning operation this is rough turning operation so my depth of cut can be slightly on a larger side okay so there were no collisions detected because we gave the clearance value okay so that every time the tool enters okay every time tool enters into the workpiece the clearance value is a value from which the feed of the tool will will start and that is the reason why there were no collisions detected so i think that's about it so we have done with the first operation that is profile roughing or rough turning now the second operation that we will carry out is a yeah this is turning a face okay. so we have this small portion over here which we will we will like to uh, turn okay i will first select the tool for this so go into the turning sample tool i will go into turning and say turning general instead of this we should have yeah somewhere over here the facing tool if we see that we will use at least i can use this okay green empty right so it is turning general again okay so let us see as the cutting edges the way we want yes this can be used as a facing tool so again the feed speed values will be taken from the tool now the front is this okay so till that we will be machining this okay now the radii and everything is already the clearances are already by default whatever we have selected the passes is the tolerance okay and multiple pass if we want okay then we can define the step overs so it's always better to define step overs and since we have 5 mm excess to remove so i can say uh, i can say 2 mm as the uh, step over so that i will have total 3 steps okay i will not have any stop to leave okay stop to leave and as far as the yeah clearances are concerned we are done so that's about it with the facing operation we just say okay and that is the way the facing is going to be done so if i just run this face 
okay the simulation we will already have the updated stock okay we will already have the updated stock which we gathered from the previous operation so that is why we clicked the remaining stock option while setting up the stock so that is always handy just increase the speed a bit yeah okay, that is how it is doing the pacing operation in an effective manner so now we have done with the uh, we are done with the rough turning and facing now next up we have to do is a grooving operation so i will just come over here and come to turning groove now turning groove we will have to apply in two sets because the geometries are disconnected okay. either if it has continuous geometries then we can have grooving applied continuously but since it has discontinuous geometries so we will be applying two grooves okay. we will select the tool again and go to turning okay, and turning grooving Okay, so OD grooving pointed. We have limited tool library over here. Okay, so that is the tool that appeared. Okay, now turning mode outside grooving. Okay, front to back, or we can say both ways. So, both ways is good because we have a substantial amount of groove to be made. So, width of the groove is almost 50 mm. So, it is a substantial groove. Now again preset values will be used okay we are not touching them right now now model as far as model is concerned see i told you i have made an extra edge just to indicate that it's a groove okay it's a groove so model groove i have already selected and these are the front and back uh, directions okay so whatever it tells us uh, that that we will we will go ahead with it so let this be model back okay, and that let this be model front yes the model front and model back so the thing is this is going to be the back portion of my groove this is going to be the front portion of my groove and my groove will be made between these boundaries so that is very important how you select the front and back for the uh, for the groove operation which is very very uh, crucial otherwise what it will do is it will completely consider this as as the groove uh, boundary and whatever comes in between it will it will start machining so that that is something we want to avoid We'll go into the passes the back of distance is one millimeter okay pass overlap you can give pass overlap to a very small value let's say 0.5 mm this is up and down and finish feed rate step over is also one number of step overs and say two okay roughing pass maximum grooving step over is one millimeter mentioned we can increase it to let's say 5 millimeter okay, and we will not have any stock to leave okay stock to leave and in terms of the linking parameters the safe distance is 2 mm and the lead in lead out angle here we will have to be very careful so here the angle is should be 90 degrees okay because it is vertically coming in and vertically going out so lead in angle and lead out angle and same as lead in angle so that's what we have specified over here if you have different angle then always it is better to uh, select it with the profile geometry so i will say okay over here and okay so i have just missed something maximum grooving step over must be smaller than the total groove width maximum grooving step should be smaller than the total groove width 
so let let this be one millimeter okay let this be one millimeter and i'll just say okay over here yeah and you will see how the grooving has appeared so for a good amount of finishing the close grooving uh, step overs we have mentioned and we'll just simulate this as you can see in simulation again okay it gives the remaining stock that is how it is going to perform so front back will save some time for us and accurately it finishes the grooving on both the sides as as be given and some finishing cycles at the end okay so this is the first groove as you can see very effectively it has machined the component just end this and then similarly we are going to select the second groove parameters as well okay so i will again start with the turning groove over here now we want to groove this particular portion okay so tool again i will select the same tool because we don't have much tools available over here so turning grooving first what i can do is i can select this but since we want again a smaller uh, cavity to be made smaller groove to be made so i'll select the same tool again let these all values be default we'll go to the geometry a model this line and this line now as i as i mentioned again i have created these geometries these lines over and above the model okay front is going to be the model front and model back okay so that is how you are going to set up the operation in radii okay we will not do much here okay, it is going to be default passes yes so pass step over number of step overs i will say 2 okay roughing passes maximum grooving let let this also be 1 okay lead in lead out now as you can see over here lead in angle okay lead in angle should be 90 degrees okay 90 degrees and i will not have same as uh, leading okay so that it will follow the geometry okay it will have lead out but not same as leading okay. so see if distance is two so all all options we have given just see whether it accurately uses the it provides us with the required type of lead in and lead out so let us just try to simulate this one as well Okay, ultimately it finishes with the lead out which we have specified by the geometry okay and lead in it uh, maintained 90 degree and lead out while going out it, it created that 45 degree uh, chamfer so that's about it with the second groove as well so we have done two grooves the first groove was a rectangular kind of a groove and the second groove was the uh, one it is it was coming 90 degrees down and then leaving 45 degrees so that was a different kind of a group and then we will do the uh, threading operation so turning thread 
you have to select the tool come to the turning sampling turning and turning 3d so we have only two tools available so 4d 3d go ahead with this 20 mm overall length okay, now here okay we will have to specify parameters the geometry so this is the geometry that i have specified so you can see over here immediately it has applied some parameters default parameter okay i don't want any backside offsets okay front side offset just to be on the safer side it is coming from a safety distance of 10 mm we can we can reduce this to 5 mm just to save some time stock od stock offset okay it doesn't matter because we are applying this as a last operation and already we are updating the stock every time passes now thread depth remember 30 m cross 2 so thread depth is going to be 2 okay number of step downs you can keep it as 5 thread pitch is also 5 for 30 m2 okay m30 cross 2 the thread pitch is uh, 2 mm itself the infeed angle uh, we will try to see what do we mean by infeed angle okay if we are going to apply a thread on on a tapered geometry then this value is uh, required okay, otherwise it is not required do multiple threads also not required okay, we will come to the linking parameters a okay, full retract retraction policy it's always to completely retract it and again uh, take it in contact so that's about it okay all the approach and retract we have whatever specified the z distances we will be using those uh, safety z dis distances i'll say okay over here and let's see whether we have any errors no there are no errors this is how the threading will be applied i'll just simulate and see how threading gets applied now it may not be uh, completely you know what is happening as you can see over here there is rapid collision with the stock now why that is happening because we haven't given any safety distance or any offset distance for the back uh, end of the geometry so what we will do instead is okay we will give that value as well so that the thread continues in the back direction also to certain extent to avoid these collisions now what is happening the thread is not getting end properly okay it is it is ended somewhere over here and that is why the, the collision has been detected now as you can see uh, depending on your ram okay, depending on your ram you will see the actual threads being appear okay, so is not happening right now i'll just edit these distances yeah offside also i will just say 2 mm and then we will not have any collisions just to confirm i will again simulate this slightly higher speed this time yeah as you can see there are no collisions that it completes the operation okay so you can select all the operations and from the beginning to end we can we can simulate this at a higher speed one operation after the other so tool change will occur is the facing in the grooving
second group and then the threading operation we have applied total four operations but here we had to apply it uh, grooving as two separate operations because it were discontinuous geometries so we have applied total five operations and i hope you have understood how to set up the lath machine in the fusion 360 environment go into the statistics the total machining time is around 1 hour 48 minutes okay so that is substantially enough so i hope you have understood this and uh, learned how to how to apply these properties now the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to post process this so what you can do is right click on this click on post process we'll just wait so that it scans all the posts that it has post processors and pops up the list for us to select from all the post processors remember since this is a web version okay the lists tends to uh, get load from the internet okay so yeah this is the program number program comment okay now fanuk turning we have to select remember fanuk milling normal fanuk is only fanuk which is dedicated milling operation we have to use fanuk turning for writing a turning program or lathe machine program so i have selected fanuk turning over here i will click on post it will give some appropriate name to the file and it will open an autodesk nc viewer in a while again the length of the program is going to be on the larger side as i mentioned okay now 3050 okay g98 okay so immediately since we are using a lath machine okay you can see in 14 line this is the turret which has been by default selected so t0600 g99 okay for the now since we have gone ahead with the can cycle mode over here okay so you will see the operations accordingly now that groove we we have given very small step over distances so that's why the length of the program is on the higher side the length overall length is 616 lines so i hope you have understood this the four operations we we completed today okay uh, thank you everyone i hope to see you next time with more such interesting content on computer aided manufacturing and cam tutorials using fusion 360 thank you